We were also discussing here on Talk Radio the number of dangerous online predators who have been arrested since the first coronavirus lockdown. 4,760 arrests, 6,500 children safeguarded between April and September last year. And we were discussing, of course, the fact that what we're doing is we're saying to children, especially when it comes to their education, here you go, here's an iPad, here's a laptop, go online, do a little bit more of online learning. Now, I don't know any adults that have to use their laptops all day that aren't fiddling around with Facebook or fiddling around with other communication apps and sites. And, of course, inevitably, online predators are going to take advantage of that. Another area where they take advantage is, of course, gaming. And, of course, many of these gaming sites, many of these consoles as well, because they're Wi-Fi enabled, you can find yourself talking to different people all over the world and you really don't know who you're talking to. You've only got their word for it, their voice. And so there is a real problem here with children or adults, rather, getting access to children who have the most horrific intentions. And someone who has really the most tragic story to tell about that, and I'm sure will be very opinionated as to what is happening during lockdown when it comes to these issues, is the founder of the Breck Foundation and mother of 14-year-old Breck Bedner. Breck Bedner was groomed online by an 18-year-old. I think it was a gaming site and tragically was then murdered by that person. And his brave mother, Lauren Lefebvre, joins me live via video link. Evening to you, Lauren. Hi, Christian. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us tonight here on Talk Radio. Um, Firstly, your reaction to the figures that we've got here in the United Kingdom, where there have seemed to have been more arrests than ever of online paedophiles, online groomers, people who are finding children online during lockdown who have the most horrific intentions towards them. It must make you feel like not much has changed in the last seven or so years. Well, the numbers are horrific, and um, lockdown has made those even worse, as you said, because we are spending more time online, including predators. Um, I had a figure of 15,000 reports of online child abuse in September um, by the Internet Watch Foundation, who, who you know collect those reports. The numbers are bad. And uh, with the Breck Foundation, the charity that I set up, we try to reach as many people as possible to bring about awareness and to recognize the signs of grooming because whether it's a gaming site or a social media site that is where predators can get access to our children to build relationships through their shared interests and have fun while they're gaming you know people don't recognize they're being groomed if they're having a good time when i've covered this story before and had to speak to parents or grandparents about it it's always absolutely blown me away how little so many parents know about their children's online activities how little they know about i remember covering it, i was saying before about pokemon go and uh, online groomers using that game to access children and how many parents just really didn't know they just thought it's a harmless game that the children i presume with 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 breck you must have just thought oh well, he's just playing a game online it, it, it's all fine so many parents don't realize do they well, I was aware, um, okay. and yet that still didn't help. Um, the average age of a gamer is actually 35, which I find really unbelievable. And I think we need you know, to make sure parents recognize that children are engaging with adults and younger than ever, you know, because we're putting devices into children's hands younger and younger. So when Breck was being groomed, um, he was invited into a gaming group by friends from school, and he knew these friends from primary. So it was long-term neighborhood school friends. Um, I noticed that there was a deeper voice within that gaming group. And when I questioned Breck, he uh, told me all sorts about the person that was running the server. His name was Lewis. He was so clever. He was teaching us to code and to encrypt. And it's the best place to game, Mom. It's so fun. Um, so that was how this predator built his relationship by, you know, providing a really engaging, interesting platform for them to game on. Um, I did try to speak with um, Breck's tutor. 
Uh, I spoke at school where I worked. I spoke to the police. I spoke to the parents of the other gamers. But I couldn't get people to recognize the danger because it was in a time where no one thought boys could be groomed. No one recognized how dangerous sort of this interaction with strangers online could be. And so Breck was interacting in this group. You, it sounds like your mother's instinct was kicking in and you, you knew something wasn't right, but you couldn't put your finger on on yeah. what. Mm-hmm. What happened next? Because he, he was 18, the, the deeper voice that you were hearing. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, I have to say, it was instinctively, it just didn't feel right. Uh, This 18-year-old, he was 17 initially, he just sounded like a creepy old scary person to me. But I realize now it wasn't an age, it was his personality was quite controlling and manipulative. And he even tried to control and groom me and try to tell me how to parent my own son. Initially, I tried to befriend him to, to gather information, you know to get more information about who he really was. I tried to stalk him online. I couldn't find any information. And I just didn't realize that I was no match for a predator of that caliber. I didn't know why he was grooming Breck. Um, I saw the signs of uh, Breck was becoming more isolated. His personality was changing. Um, his, His viewpoints were changing. Um, but I didn't know where to go to get help. And now one of the reasons we set up the, you know, the charity Breck Foundation is to signpost where people can go, you know, report it to school, even if it's not happening at school. Uh, go to the NSPCC, go to uh, CEOP, Child Exploitation and Online Protection Command, phone the police and phone the police again and again. I tried and yet I failed. A Breck was lured to this predator's flat even after um, we forbade him from interacting with this predator at all. And it went more underground and became more secretive. And that's when it became even more dangerous. Um, A year, sorry, a month before uh, Breck was killed, he had an e-safety assembly at school. and, And it just wasn't taught in an engaging way. It wasn't taught with real life stories, with you know, kind of hard hitting words and hard hitting, hard hitting concepts about relationships and coercive control. And so the boys took, they didn't take it in. And I think really comes down to friends online looking after each other because the person being groomed may not recognize the danger. You know, we need to be reporting this of when we see it happening within our each other, within our groups. And was there a sexual element to this person grooming uh, Breck or was it were there other reasons? Well, this was part of the problem. I didn't know why Breck was being groomed. Um, Initially, my first thoughts were that it was of a sexual nature because of the way the groomer portrayed himself online. He portrayed himself uh, really effeminate. Now, my dad wore a pink shirt for weddings and he was a Harley guy. So, you know, I think everyone can wear what they want and be what they want. And, 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 but I felt like this was a predator trying to appeal to the boys with his attractive looks. And he was dressed up more than any of the other boys were dressed up. I didn't care if any of the boys were, you're gay. I, I still don't know. It doesn't matter. That wasn't the issue. I just didn't want someone pushing their sexuality onto the boys before they were ready to decide for themselves. As time went on, I thought he was grooming them for um, extremism, radicalization, because he was turning them against government, religion, school, anything established, anything you know that 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 uh, had structure. And uh, I even thought he was grooming them for hacking. He was teaching them, you know, how to do coding and encryption. And he was actually a hacker himself. And in the end, yes, he wanted Breck for sexual reasons, but worse. You know, we wanted him. uh, He was interested in he was sadistic and and murder was a sadistic and sexual murder. Uh, You know, my worst possible dreams. I didn't even I couldn't have even had that bad of nightmares, to be honest. I'm I'm so I'm so blown away, Lauren, by how matter of fact you're able to explain what happened to your boy, because, you know, that is the most hideous end. And as you say, a mother's a mother who had the instinct that something was wrong anyway, your absolute worst nightmare. Yeah, I tried. I tried to save him. I just wasn't 
aware of other places that I could go for help. Yeah. And so that was why we set up the charity is I wanted to make sure that this wouldn't happen to any other family. And I'm, I'm and, full, sorry, go on. Well, and I know Breck's uh, case is an extreme case, but you know, the hundreds of thousands of children that are be, being abused or exploited in other ways through county lines, through, you know, radicalization and for sexual exploitation, we need to teach children about grooming from a young age, you know, as soon as they are spending time online, they need to learn what a healthy relationship should look like. And without, I suppose, you know, it, it, you're right, and it's it's an extreme case, and what Brett went through must utterly haunt you, but also without getting that level of detail out there, people aren't going to know the potential danger. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you look at what's happened with children during this lockdown year, they are using the internet for all sorts. You know, if they feel they have a loss of control and they want to find some kind of meaning in their life, there's a lot of young people that are, you know, self-harming. They're they're doing extreme dieting. They're going on fasting diets. They're doing they're doing something to just try to figure out what they should be doing within this crazy year. And uh, you know, eating disorders are skyrocketing. Mental health issues are skyrocketing for all of us, but, you know, worst scenario for our children who are missing out on school. And, uh, you know, we have to get our children back in school and, you know, in, in the safest way possible because they just, they deserve that. What was Breck like? Um, he was, I am, I think he's amazing. Uh, I know I'm his mom, but he was a chilled, easy boy. And I spent four years trying to have that child. And when he came, it was, I was over the moon. Um, and he looked after his triplet siblings. He was the best big brother, kind of advising them. And he was my right hand man, fixing, making, you know, doing things because uh, I was a single mom and he was always the one who would be there, kind of the man of the house. And uh, yeah, I miss him like crazy. And it, it doesn't go away. We're about to come up onto our seven year anniversary. and. Every day I do hate my life and I hate my job, <laughs> but I do it because I don't want this to happen to anyone else. And, you know, we've had other incidents since one of the triplets was contacted by, via uh, Snapchat and Instagram with um, someone pretending to, pretending to be the murderer, talking horrifically about what happened to her brother. And that, after two years, is still being investigated by police. And it was actually in the Telegraph today, a little follow-up article um, by the journalist Mike Wright, because we want answers. We want to know who is this person portraying himself as a murderer, you know, harassing and and making my you know my poor yeah. daughter's life worse. Uh, they've already had to deal with the loss of a brother and then their mom who had PTSD and is, you know, I'll never be exactly the same. Um, and then they had that. So we're hoping to get help from the home office and we're hoping to get help uh, from government to try to get uh, changes in policy. Sajid Javid was amazing when he was home secretary and helped us out. But there's still problems in policing where they don't have the funding, they don't have the tech skills. And, you know, my daughter says, well, I reported this and nothing happens. So what's the point of reporting? And that's the last message we want to send to children as they won't bother to tell us when something goes wrong online, if nothing happens, if nothing changes. Do you think it's because, uh, when, again, when I've ever looked into this and reported on it, it, it always amazes me how prevalent it seems to be. And I don't know whether people realise quite how how much of a, an issue this is. I don't think people realise how many predators will go after children, will go after children on the kinds of websites, Facebook and Snapchat, as you say, that Anything. people use every day. I, I, I don't think people quite get the gravity of it and the extent of it. Would you agree with that? I do agree with that. I mean... Um... Police say uh, last time I heard, which was last year, the year before, there's, they think there's over 300 pred uh, predators within the UK alone, and each of those will be grooming tens of, you know, hundreds of children until they find one that makes a mistake. Which is why I try to say, you know, the teenagers who think they're past it and wouldn't fall for it, Breck never would have thought he f would have fallen for it. He was an A-star student and had common sense on top, and uh, you know. It, it, I don't know how they get through, but 
uh, they have this power. And so what we try to do is, is you know, get those teenagers to actually take part and, and help each other and look out for their siblings. And even adults, you know, police have to deal with cases of adults meeting people online who aren't who they say mm. they are. So these issues aren't going away, but it's really a group effort. And we want more help from the gaming industry and from social media industry who make billions and billions in profits. We want them to you know, continue to create their um, the safety within their platform that actually does the job. And it's hard because predators will open new profiles. They have the tricks. Uh, but we need to keep pushing to have laws changed and to get uh, policing to take it as seriously as crime that's face to face and to make sure these people are taken off the street, off the cyber street. What happened to the, the, the absolute awful, disgusting person that did this? We won't name the person that did this, but what, what happened to them? Um, well, he thought he could just get away with it. I don't know. He had gotten away with a lot of other crimes before this. And, um, Sadly, I didn't know that when I reported him to the police. They didn't check the records at the time. And so, um, yeah, he's going to spend life in prison, a minimum of 25 years. And I can't imagine that he would ever be able to get out because he's never shown remorse. He actually blamed me you know, along with his family, saying I was a horrible mother. I mean, he actually killed Breck on my birthday. And I think it was because... Um, he was angry at his mother from abandoning him. And yeah. I was opposite. I was kind of like hovering, paranoid parent, and he was abandoned, sadly. And so I think that that had played something into it. I don't know if he was jealous that Breck had someone asking him to come to dinner, asking him to come to family activities. He turned Breck against all of that. But in reality, who wouldn't want to have love in your family yeah. and he didn't and breck did and it kills me to think that in breck's last moments he probably thought wow mom was right you know i, I and that guilt you'll never not have that yeah. guilt and I, I you have nothing to feel guilty for but that's not logical you, you, you won't help. logically think like that will you you can't help but feeling guilt you know yeah. guilty because you know when you decide to have a child you are the parent for life and you try to keep them healthy happy and safe and you know i i did fail and i know that i tried but boy i wish i could do it over again you didn't fail you <laughs> didn't fail you knew something was wrong you did what you could you tried and you did what you could. The authorities failed. Society failed. Gaming industry failed. How do you have come on and said to me, well, you know, I had no idea what Brett was doing and it was absolutely nothing to do with me. It was a huge surprise. Perhaps then we could say that there was a little bit of failure, but you didn't cause that absolute animal to well, and do that. Would be, that would be the more normal thing. And that's why sort of what we've been talking about with these new statistics that come out, it's actually says a third of parents don't know who their children are talking to online and two thirds of parents uh, are concerned about who they're talking to online. So there is reason to be concerned whether it's something as extreme as, extreme as Brex or just someone who's trying to influence our children in, in ways that we don't want them to be influenced. Um, listen, we're, we're running out of time, but just quickly, we were just talking before about a headline, rather salacious headline written about a female teacher who groomed a 15 year old boy and it was a salacious headline about how you know her boyfriend couldn't keep up with her sexual appetite and the like do you think that we still diminish the grooming of boys i do think it is thought of differently and one of the things that you know we teach with the foundation is that boys can be groomed too and you know they are still children you know i know that People think differently about boys and girls sexually sometimes when they're teenagers, but you know they're still children and they still need to be safeguarded. Well, Absolutely. you would have inevitably, Lauren, saved lives. Breck would have saved lives uh, mm -hmm. as a result of you starting the foundation and getting people aware of what is going on. And all I can do is offer my condolences, but also admiration for what you're doing, getting that information out there because you are so right so many parents just don't know and, and and you're contributing to them finding out 
Well, thanks for helping highlight the issues because, um, you know, people can come to our website. We have a lot of other places. What is, what is the website? Uh, www.breckfoundation.org. So if you Google Breck, you'll come across uh, some stuff. And um, we also have a film called Breck's Last Game that is great for teenagers. Uh, not the little ones, but for teenagers. And it's just a short educational film. So. And any parents that have any worries or anything like that can go to that website and find resources, find places where they can get the kind of information that they need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, really appreciate the time that you spared us tonight. And uh, thank you for telling um, Breck's story and, and, of course, your own. Lauren Lefebvre, who is the founder of the Breck Foundation, mother of 14-year-old Breck Bednar, who was groomed online and then murdered. Um,